Hello everyone! Hello! Welcome to Victory Malate and welcome to our online worship service. You know, here in Victory, it is really our heart to honor God and make disciples. Yes, tama ka dyan, Ate Chams. And you know, it has already been seven weeks since the enhanced community quarantine has been declared. But as a church, we've continued to meet, worship, and pray together, even online. And maybe this is your first time joining us here in Victory Malate. We want to connect with you and encourage you to be part of our church community through our Victory groups. You can simply click the link in the video caption that says Get Connected if you want to be connected to a Victory group. Or you could go to victorymalate.org and click the button Get Connected. I hope that this will not be your last time joining us and we are excited to see you physically after this ECT. Yes, that's right. And Christelle, you mentioned about ECQ, right? You know, kahit naka-enhanced community quarantine tayo, this doesn't stop us from declaring and demonstrating the gospel in our families, friends, communities, and even to our nation. Because just this week, I've heard great stories from our leaders on how they have maximized their time this season. And um, one of which is from NJ Aquino. Sabi niya, in this season, I get to read my books that I haven't finished. So, buti pa siya. Kasi ako din, tambak na yung librong gusto kong basahin. And sabi niya dito, spend more time with my family and making our own merienda. So, pa-deliver din kami dito, NJ, okay? <laughs> and I get to rest and enjoy my time with the Lord. And we also push through with our one-to-one -one and victory group via online. And also, si Tita Angel, she near niya din that it was an opportunity for her to pray with her in-laws during our 12 noon prayer time. So, yon. So, sobrang nakatuwa lang that they are really maximizing this season to uh, grab the opportunity to share the gospel and really declare who Jesus is to the lives of their family members. Yes, ako din naman ate, encourage din ako from one of our leaders from the Family Life Ministry, from Ate Yet Gozos. She said this about the ECQ season. Um, let me just read. The season is full of uncertainty, but at the same time, it has created a unique opportunity for families to spend ample quality time together. Let's do our best to remain present and embrace the gift of time with family and not neglect meeting together. Our ongoing discipleship to Jesus depends on finding ways to hold to one another emotionally, even if not physically during this time. Yeah, we do hope that you are continually meeting with your victory groups if, if you're already part of one. Group ko, we try to meet on a weekly basis para talagang we continue to encourage and share God's word together. And I want to share as well yung ginagawa ng mga students sa, um, natin ngayong season. Even if you can't go to the campuses physically or meet with students physically, they've been initiating um, things online like the hashtag Design for His Kingdom where they create yeah. artwork to share God's word and hashtag worship at home where they share their devotions and many different things that they are doing in their homes and with their family. So, sobrang encouraging kasi they're really keeping um, their time productive and continuing to honor God and make disciples. Wow, nakaka-encourage naman talaga yun. And ako personally, may, even this lockdown, may mga skills na rin ako na-unlock like cooking. Yes, mm -hmm. pero hindi pa ganun kagaling. <laughs> so, yun. So, nagsisimula pa lang po. At, um, uh, even it, with my victory group, it is an opportunity for me to personally uh, connect with them individually, even this time of ECQ. So, kayo then who are joining us right now, you could also share your quarantine highlights in the comment section of this video. And speaking of family, if you are a parent or an ate or kuya, tito or tita, and if you have kids or mga kapatid or pamangkins, Please do invite and encourage them to join our kids church online. So yon. So for the past 7 weeks, we have been teaching the kids to know that God can use us despite our weaknesses so we can depend on him more and to know Jesus identity on a deeper level which will result in an increase of love, 
worship and obedience to Him. So we prepared interactive videos, family devotionals, and even activities that could help the kids understand the topic more. So isn't that awesome? Yes, that's right. Indeed, we are serious about reaching the next generation. You know, the Chams, like you said earlier, naka enhanced community quarantine tayo, but this does not stop us from declaring and demonstrating the gospel to our community and even our nation. That is why I want to share with you our highlights for this week um, about what we're doing as a church here in the cities of Manila and Pasay. We continually support our frontline workers. Again, thank you to our frontline workers for all that you do. We're tirelessly serve, um, serving our country amidst the crisis. To date, our church has blessed 8,250 pieces of masks to the hospital, 1,530 pieces of food packs for the hospitals and barangay departments, 90 pieces of both energy bars and drinks to different barangays, and bunny suits for our medical frontliners. And all of this is made possible through your generosity as well. Together, let us continue to honor God by demonstrating the gospel and by loving our community. Praise God for that. That is indeed hashtag Good News 2020. And even in our trying times, we can still be a blessing to others, right? And if you haven't joined us in extending help to those who are fighting on the front lines, Make sure to check the details that will be flashed on your screens or you could take a picture of it. Together, with God's help and grace, let us continue to love the city by praying and supporting our frontliners. Yes, and again, thank you for joining us in our online worship service. Now make sure to gather your family, tag your friends, your schoolmates and workmates, at yung mga tao that you've been praying to invite sa mga services natin in the comment section of this video. And we'll see you later for our online worship service. See you! Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us in our online service. I hope that every one of us is excited to worship God today. As we prepare our hearts to worship Him, let me just declare these passages from the book of Psalm 115. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with lute and harp. Praise Him with tambourine and dance. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with sounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us now join the worship team as they lead us in worship.
Father, we praise you for your faithfulness and goodness. We praise you for your loving kindness, your grace and mercy. They are new every morning. May we continue, Father, to be dependent on you. For we acknowledge that apart from you, we are nothing. And thank you for you are trustworthy. That every time that we come before you, you will hear and answer our prayers. Thank you, Father, for sustaining us with your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As we worship God today to our giving, let me read from the book of Genesis chapter 14, verses 17 to 20. It says here, After his return from the defeat of Kedor Leomer, and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaddai, that is the king's valley. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God, most high, of God most high. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham by God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Abraham just came from a battle when he and his 318 men prevailed the armies of several kings. God supernaturally handed Abraham's enemies into his hands. Afterward, Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek, who was a priest of God. Why did Abraham tithe? In ancient times, Rulers would give tribute to rulers over them as a sign of allegiance and as a acknowledgement of the protection they receive. Sa panahon po natin, whenever we give our tithe, we are acknowledging that God is our ruler and our protector. We're only giving back to God what is due to Him because of who He is and what He has done for us. Before we pray, if you have prayer requests and answered prayers, send them through this link in the caption of this video or by scanning the QR code posted on the screen. We would love to pray for you and rejoice with you with your answered prayers. You can return your tithes and give your offering by visiting victory.org.ph slash give or by scanning the QR code posted in the screen. If you want to support our frontliners, you may do so by clicking the link or by scanning the QR code for more details. Together, let's continue to worship God and honor Him by putting Him first in our lives and allowing Him to do His work through us and in us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for reminding us for, for who you are, Lord, in our lives, that you are our ruler and our protector. Father, as we give our tithes and offering today, Father, we ask, Lord, that you will bless our giving. Use, Lord, use, Lord, our tithe and offerings in advancing your kingdom. Maraming maraming salamat niyo, Panginoon, for giving us the privilege in partnering with you, Lord, in fulfilling the Great Commission. Lord, maraming maraming salamat ito, Panginoon, that indeed, Lord, that you are our great provider. That whatever challenges, Lord, that we are facing today, Lord, we are facing right now, thank you, that you are the one, Lord, that will provide for everything that we need. And that we will just continue, Lord, to support the work, Lord, that you have called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's continue to worship. I 
my only hope is you. I find my rest when I lean on you. Jesus, I lean on you. shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me through the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hello everyone, thank you for joining today's worship service. We are starting a three-part series on Psalm 23 entitled Perspective. So please turn your Bibles there. We are going to read a very familiar passage, but hopefully uh, God will speak to us and minister to us as we study His Word. In Psalm 23, says here, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. God, we ask you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation as we look at this very familiar passage. May you give us a fresh perspective and a fresh impartation of faith as we seek to know you more through this scripture. Bless the reading of your word and the preaching of your word, even as we look at this, God, with open eyes, open ears, open hearts, open minds and understanding as you open the scripture to us. Lord, bless our time. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Starting today for a three-part series, we're going to look at Psalm 23. It's one of the most popular passages of Scripture, one of the most popular psalm, and of course, sino na basta atin siguro ngayon na hindi pa nakakaalam at nakakarinig somehow ng Psalm 23. Diba? It's very common even for Jewish people to use this during the Shabbat. And of course, um, among Christians, it's also very common to hear this passage, not just preach on pulpit, but even in funerals. So for this next few weeks, we're going to look at probably your favorite psalm, and we pray that God will give us a fresh perspective and understanding of who He is as we go through this series. You know, from the title of our series, Perspective, yung word na yun actually means taking a, a two-dimensional piece of paper, like in drawing, and when you draw something with a perspective, it's looking at it from a point of view that gives it some impression of height, width, and depth that makes the picture appear like a 3D, such like this picture uh, in a drawing. Maraming mga engineers sa kanilang mga drafting classes, pati mga architects are very familiar with this. They give us a perspective of how a place being constructed looks like with the width, the height, and the depth, and the dimension that's associated with it. In photography, yung perspective also shows us like a different point of view taken from a different angle. So may fresh perspective na nakikita about a particular place. And in a sense, itong pandemic that we are going through right now somehow have forced us to look at things that may be so familiar, tulad mga bahay natin or some of the things that we are doing. And hopefully, we are getting a different perspective about about life, about our house, our home, about relationships, about our career, about our cities and our nations. But uh, as we go through this series, we're not just looking for those perspectives, but hopefully we will get a different, fresh, and a better perspective of who God is, basing it on Psalm 23. So if you want a main point, a message that I would like for you to remember for this week's message. Um, madali po siyang tandaan. It's just verse 1. Let's all read this together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, in a different translation, in the NIV, this is what it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. In the New Living Translation, this is how it is rendered. The Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. I would like to explain this phrase by phrase and hopefully it will give us a greater appreciation kung ano ba talaga yung mensahe nitong psalm. First of all, I want to highlight yung phrase na yan. There's a note there at the beginning of the psalm. A psalm of David. So pag sinabing psalm, it's actually a song. It's a poem. It's supposed to be accompanied with the music. And of course, itong psalms, the book of psalms, is a collection of 150 psalms. And um, it's a collection of Hebrew praises and hymns and usually used for uh, worship and meditation and prayer. So it talks to God, and at the same time, it is uh, talking about God, and not just God talking to us because it is His Word, because it's part of Scripture. In fact, the uh, Psalm Sigur is one of the favorite portions of the Old Testament. So Psalm 23 is written by David, who is not just a king, who is not just a giant slayer, who is not just a lion and a, and a bear killer, 
while well, he was still the shepherd boy, is also a psalmist. In fact, one of the early introductions of David coming into the scene, siya yung anointed king next to King Saul. Kasi nga si King Saul disobeyed God and somehow uh, the Spirit of God has left him. And here we are being introduced to what kind of a person is this to David. Um, sabi dito in verse 18 of 1 Samuel chapter 16, that one of the young men answered, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence, and the Lord is with him. And ito yung mga descriptions associated with David. He was skillful in playing. Okay, so hindi ito yung playing basketball or playing sport, but it's actually playing an instrument. Okay, the lyre, the harp, and uh, of course, he is not just a good uh, instrumentalist, a musician, but he is also a man of valor, meaning someone with efficient strength. He has a uh, power to influence. And not only that, he was a man of war, meaning he was a warrior, someone who is brave and courageous and, and would face uh, the enemy. And of course, someone who is prudent in speech, someone who is discerning, accurate with his words, tactful, and on top of that, some in the Bible is a man of good presence, meaning someone who is handsome, someone who is attractive in the eyes or of people and yung presence niya is actually something that is very charismatic. But what's amazing about David is that this is what the Bible says about him, that the Lord is with him. Now, I hope as we learn from Psalm 23, the more we see God from the perspective of David, I hope that we would also grow more into becoming, in a way, like David. I'm sure it's always good to aspire that the Lord is also with us. And what would help us have that is seeing who God is, knowing the Lord the way David knew the Lord. And of course, one of the things that we can find about David is that David is a worshiper, someone who praised God, someone who, who loves to sing songs to God. In fact, in 1 Samuel 16, verse 23, this is what it says, that whenever the harmful spirit from God was upon Saul, David took the lyre, and played it with his hands. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the harmful spirit departed from him. So what we can see here from the life of David is that David was such a worshiper. He is such a person who loves to praise God that the Lord is also with him. And yung power ng, ng lifestyle of worship that David had is in such a way that even tormenting spirits would leave and as we talk about Psalm 23, I hope that we will not just know more about God, but the more we know God, the more we would be a worshiper of God. The more we would live a life of praise unto Him, and the more we would experience the Lord being with us. And whatever tormenting spirits that may be around us, around our families, around, around our cities, our communities, we actually expel them out because the presence of God is so strong in our midst. That's why we want to encourage everyone to really have a lifestyle of worship. Now, pagdating sa bahay, when we attend an online service, that we are not just actually watching and observing, but we are actually worshiping. In fact, kahit hindi nga online worship service, in your own time, maybe your devotional, when you play a worship song or you actually sing it out and worship God, let's cultivate a lifestyle of worship. So let's break this down, verse 1, phrase by phrase. It says here, the Lord is. Why don't you say that with me? The Lord is. I'm sure you have noticed as uh, we've been reading this even from a while ago, that yung Lord dito is actually all capitals. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital L. When you find this in scripture, um, this is actually a word that is different from God in, in, in Hebrew Elohim the plurality of God, God being one and yet many. Uh, it is also different from the word um, Adonai, or which is translated, written as capital L, then small letters O-R-D. So pag sinabing Lord with all capitals, capital L-O-R-D, we are being reminded of the personal name of God that was revealed through Moses. 
This was first mentioned in Exodus chapter 13, verse 13 to 15. So when God appeared to Moses in the form of burning bush, Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, yung, yung, all capitals na yun, I am that I am. So yeah, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. So when the psalmist was saying here that the Lord is, he's basically saying that Yahweh, the personal name of God, the name that means I am that I am, or I will be that I will be, the one who is, the one ever coming into manifestation, that this is the God of his fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God who is revealed in the Old Testament who created all things. And he is not just the God, uh, Elohim, he is not just the God who is uh, Adonai, a uh, powerful one, the destiny maker, but he is a personal God who revealed himself through people in history. And his name means the one who is and has always existed and does exist and will always exist. And I think if we could grasp how God is so real and he is the self-existing one that there is nothing in the past that is more real than him that there is nothing currently that you could perceive as real whether by your senses or by your your feeling or by your imagination or or there's nothing that is real or that will exist in the past or present or in the future could ever be that there is no other thing or no other person that is more real and is more existing than this God was David was talking about. And this God is a God who wants to reveal himself personally to you and to me. People going through challenges that is so real, difficulties and obstacles that are so just right before us. And of course, may mga fears, may mga threats tayo na nararamdaman, not just presently, but also in the future. And they seem to be real to us. They seem to be there, existing, right around us, before us. I hope and I pray that as we look at Psalm 23, that God will make himself more real to us than anything in this world. That God will show us, God, God will manifest his, who he is to us. Right there, I mean, he is present everywhere, but he will be present in such a way that you could sense him, that you could know him, that you could experience him as someone who is true and someone who is right there with you. And if he could show us that he is right there with us then, and he is right here with us now, and we can have this assurance that he will be there, he will be more real and more existing for us even in the future. I think that will give us great comfort knowing that the Lord, this personal God, this powerful God, this great God, is, He is present. He is real. He is true. More than you could ever dream or hope God to be real, to be true. You know, the next phrase that I would like us to understand says here that the Lord is my shepherd. Everybody say, my shepherd. So if the Lord is the first part of the verse shows us the greatness of this God, a God who is so amazing and so powerful, I am that I am, I will be that I will be, whatever is needed to be and, and whatever we would hope or wish Him to be, He is that and so much more. Ito namang portion that the Lord is my shepherd. It speaks of how good God is. He is not just great. He is good. He's not just powerful. That he is personal. Ngayon, medyo hirap tayo i-grasp yung, yung picture. But it's a, it's a very common picture during the time of David. In fact, if you may recall, David is not just a psalmist, but he was also a shepherd ever since he was a boy. 
And uh, I was just trying to imagine this, that when David was writing this, maybe he was being reminded of what kind of uh, a challenge it is for someone to become a shepherd. Uh, during that time, di ba, parang yung mga shepherds, parang it's such a menial task. Remember being the youngest kid among brothers. Siya usually naiiwan to take care of the sheep. And uh, of course, in some cultures, medyo din despise nila to kasi nga, to take care of the sheep is challenging and difficult. You know, sheep are not very smart animals. They usually get into trouble on their own. You know, they're, they usually are astray or they end up uh, eating something that's not good for them or very much attractive prey to predators like wolves and lions and bears. So yung mga shepherds, sila yung mga uh, working hard, but at the same time, it's such a risky task. And uh, of course, kaya ngayon iba, nag-hire na lang ng mga shepherds. But when when David, I believe, was saying this, that the Lord is my shepherd, he was probably imagining someone who is willing now to risk his life just to take care and to protect the sheep. And for David, he was basically declaring that the Lord is my shepherd. Someone is willing to fight for him. Someone is willing to protect him. And we could see more of that even in the coming verses. And of course, uh, pag sinabing shepherd, it actually has a very wonderful meaning. Like aside from God being willing to do what nobody else to do, aside from the Lord being willing to pay the price, to risk himself, just to protect and to take care of the flock because that's that's who God is, that's who he is. But it also gives us a picture of what kind of a God he is. Pag sinabing shepherd kasi, along with that word also is the meaning of uh, someone who is a companion, someone who is a friend, someone who is a keeper. In other words, a shepherd is someone who has a special bond and connection with the flock or the time that you spend with the flock racing, bringing them to, to eat and to places where they could drink, where they could feel rested. And, and not only that, yung mga shepherds kasi talagang they, they know their flock by name. They, they have a special bond with, with the flock that they, they own. A shepherd is someone that the sheep recognizes even by his own voice. So merong special bond and may special connection. And I think when David was saying this, that the Lord is my shepherd, he was having a, a thought of how he had a personal connection with God. That he is a God who revealed himself not just to Moses, he's not just a God who revealed himself to, to Abraham, to Isaac, or to Jacob, but he's a God that he personally knows. That's why he could say it this way. The Lord, Yahweh, is my shepherd. He is my constant companion. He is my friend. He is someone who, who keeps me, someone who protects me, someone who knows my every need, and someone who provides for all of these needs. In other words, he is a shepherd, a leader, a kind of uh, a ruler that cares for the people that he leads. He is mindful of our needs, and he provides for everything that we need. And, and as a shepherd, as as a, my shepherd, this is what, what David was saying. He is basically saying that not only that he is my shepherd, but actually that it's like God saying to him that he is his. Okay, kasi pag sinabi natin my, di ba, parang uh, we own it. Pero itong statement na the Lord is my shepherd, the shepherd actually can also mean someone who who owns the sheep, who owns the flock. And this is the kind of a shepherd who's willing to lay down his life for the flock because he owns them and he actually cares for them. So when uh, when David was writing this, the Lord is my shepherd. It's a picture of a God who is not just great, a God who is just revealed in history, but a God who has revealed himself to David personally. Someone who have walked with him, someone who have been with him through the years, someone who who is a, a protector and a keeper, a provider, a companion, a leader that is actually for him. In fact, it's such a powerful picture for David 
that I believe that when he was writing this, the Lord is my shepherd, parang hindi lang ito yung picture nung ano, nung, uh, you know, siguro si David as a shepherd boy, sa ka meditate niya kay God, what kind of a leader he is, what kind of a shepherd he is. Siyempre, kasama doon sa perspective na narealize niya, naku, parang talaga tayong sheep. That's the other perspective, not just who God is, as in the Lord, as the shepherd, but a, a perspective of who we are really, that we are like sheep, always gone astray, always lost, always uh, um, going into the wrong things, always need, needs rescuing. But when David understood this kind of a shepherd, this kind of a leader, this kind of a lord, this kind of a king that rules and reigns to us with goodness, with love, with kindness, it affected David, I believe, in the way he led, in the way he led others and became the king of Israel. In Psalm 78, this is a psalm of Asaph, uh, and he was des- describing David as a king. This is what it says in Psalm 78, verse 70 to 72. He chose David his servant and took him from the sheep pens. From tending the sheep, he brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands, he led them. Because of David's understanding of who God is, of who the Lord is, and how he is a shepherd to him, and how God has uh, provided for him everything that he needs. I am that I am. I will be that I will be. Ito na si David, when he was leading the people, he reflected the kind of a shepherd king. He saw God to be the king over his life. He shepherded the people with integrity of heart and will skillful hands. And while we're at this verse, I think it's good for us to, to be praying for the different leaders around us. If you are a parent, if you are a husband, if you are a father or a mother uh, in a home, as you lead your home, or maybe as you are a, a business leader, you own a company and, and you're a supervisor, or maybe our government leaders, I think it's good for us to be reminded that as we lead our people, that we lead them with integrity of heart, with a good heart, but at the same time with skillful hands, with the best that we could. And one of the best ways for us to learn that is to be under the Lord, under His kingship, under His rulership, that we too are being shepherded by Him. And that we understand that the whatever leadership role that we have is actually an extension of his leadership over our lives. So as we look at this verse, the Lord is my shepherd. I would like for us to picture God, this great God, this this magnificent God, the God who has revealed himself as not just powerful but personal, not just great but also good, the God who leads us and rules over us is someone who is a shepherd king. Someone who loves us. Someone who cares for us. Kaya nga pagka narinig natin yung Lord, sometimes ang idea natin is that when we, we call Him Lord, it's just like, it's so hard for us to submit to His Lordship. So hard for us to surrender our all to Him because we, we only picture a God, uh, a God who is maybe like a control freak, a God who is maybe like, who is very controlling. But when David saw the Lord as uh, his shepherd, I guess the response was, how can we not surrender our all to a God like that? A God who is not just great, but a God who is good. How can we not give our all to a God like that? A God who is powerful and yet someone who is very personal and loving and caring. How can we not submit to a king like that? A king who is humble and willing to take on a shepherd's road, even though it's risky and someone who wants to lay down his life for us just to protect us. You know, when we, th- when we see God as a, a shepherd king, when we see the Lord as David was trying to give us a picture, it's, we can't help but just worship him and love him and submit to him and surrender to him. And of course, may mga corresponding blessings then that follows as we put ourselves under His kingship, under His rulership. And this is what the last phrase really says here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Can you say that with me? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
In the other versions that we read a while ago, Sabi that I lack nothing. I have all that I need. Seeing who the Lord is. Seeing that He is a shepherd. Ito yung parang conclusion niya. Wala na akong hahanapin pa. Shall not want. I will be fully satisfied with Him. He knows how to give full, deep, lasting satisfaction. Everything that I need, He knows already in advance and He will definitely provide. Everything that I desire, because I know who He is, His desire for me is always the best. Hindi ito yung parang ano ha, na I have everything that I need or I shall not want, I will lack nothing that God will move uh, heavens and earth just to give in to my desires. On the contrary, the verse is basically saying it's it's very, very different. It's a declaration of of the psalmist. I shall not what? Wala na akong hanapin pa. Wala na akong healingin pa. Because the Lord is my shepherd. Because of who He is, I am that I am. I will be that I will be. Because He is a a ruler, a shepherd king who loves and cares for us, I can be completely satisfied, completely secure that as long as I'm under his rulership, under his, uh, a, a part of his flock, I am safe, I am secure, I am satisfied, I am well provided for, there's provision, there's satisfaction, and many more. Of course, uh, when when David was singing this a while ago, it affected his leadership, and he became a great king. In fact, the future kings and the prophesied Messiah is actually being depicted as a son of David. So, yeah, that's a kind of picture of what a king is supposed to be, unlike King Saul who was be replaced by David. And uh, of course, David himself was not a perfect king. He was not a perfect leader. He's not a perfect person. But that heart of understanding who God is as the Lord, as the shepherd, and how that submission to his kingship and rulership even affected the way he led others, knowing that it's God ultimately who leads his people. It affected uh, not just his life, not just his future generations, but even this nation of Israel. And we will find out in the rest of the world because of God's promise that even if uh, the Israel shepherds failed, just like what Ezekiel prophesied in Ezekiel 34, you know, the shepherds, the leaders that, uh, that was given the position and the power are no longer leading God's people in the way God would lead them. Instead of uh, a shepherd that, that lays down their lives for the sheep, ito yung mga shepherds naman na who's willing to sacrifice the flock for their own benefit. Instead of... Uh, like a king that will go in front to protect and to provide all God's people. Ito naman yung parang taking advantage of the people. And yet, in the midst of this prophecy, it's like God was also saying that where that Israel's shepherds failed, God himself will come to be that shepherd king. And of course, the prophesied Messiah is the one who will come and shepherd them. And of course, when Jesus came in John chapter 10, verse 7 to 10, we find here Jesus giving this reference to himself as that prophesied Messiah. So uh, Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So, the phrases na tala, parang, I am the door and I am the door of the sheep. It's hard for us to imagine because we don't really uh, live in a shepherding culture unless you are a, a veterinarian or you probably in the province. But even in the Philippines, medyo hirap pa kasi wala namang masyadong sheep tayo nakikita dito. But, but the picture here is that, you know, when shepherds sometimes would take care of the flock, you would put them in this pen, and the shepherd would sleep at the entry point. And uh, in other words, dun siya nakastation, dun siya nagbabantay, so that no predator can come and take the flock unless it first goes to the shepherd. And now Jesus, this is Jesus saying, 
in this New Testament that He is the door of the sheep. And he is the reason why lost sheep can enter the fold and come under His protection. Of course, Jesus continued on by saying in verse 11 to 16, that I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. So in the story, we could find here that Jesus is actually God himself who came down to become the shepherd for us. And he is the good shepherd who knows us and calls us by name. In fact, he did that during his earthly ministry. He called people by name. He was such a very personal shepherd king, a very humble and yet a great king. And as we can find in the story later, that he is indeed a shepherd who is willing to lay down his life for the sheep. Of course, um, we all know that Jesus is the Passover lamb, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But in a sense, he is also the shepherd who laid down his life so that he could save those of us who are lost. Those of us who are under the rulership of a, a someone who is taking advantage of us, someone who is not really a good leader, someone, uh, even an enemy who is trying to steal, kill, and destroy but Jesus is now saying it's time for God's people, for those who are hearing his voice, so that we could uh, turn away from serving other gods, from serving our own selves, from serving uh, you know, the evil one, to actually submitting to his lordship and to be a part of not just his flock, but really his family. And the closest that Jesus had with the Father is a closeness that God wants us to have that through Christ we could be His children as well. So I want to end this message by asking each and every one of us, you know, if I could look at you one by one and call you by name, you know, uh, if we are seeing each other face to face, this is probably a one-on-one -on -one question that I would ask you. Who is the Lord to you? And is the Lord your shepherd? Can you say that I am His? Because the Bible promises that if He is the Lord, our shepherd, the promise is that we shall not want. We have all that we need. We will lack nothing. In Him we have abundant provision, and ultimate satisfaction. Of course, it doesn't mean that we may get whatever we want, but like David, I hope we have confidence to say, oh God, because I have you, I have all that I need. Because I have you, even if I don't have everything else, I am completely and fully satisfied. Can we just bow our heads as we pray right now? Lord, I pray right now, God, that you would be the Lord who is ever-present, especially, Lord, to your children, especially, Lord, to your flock. And today, God, we pray and we declare that you are our shepherd and in you we shall not want. And while we're praying, if that's you, you've never really surrendered your life to Jesus, you have never really turned over your life to him. I want to invite you. It's probably one of the best things that you can do today. If you could just uh, join me and pray this very simple prayer. Lord, from now on, I want you to be the Lord over my life. I surrender my all to you. I ask for your forgiveness, Lord, for, for worshiping other gods, for surrendering to somebody else's control and maybe wanting to be in control of my own life. 
maybe that's the reason why there's always something lacking and missing and you know, something that I always want but I don't get. But Lord, today I surrender to you, my whole life to you. I surrender to you all my desires, all my needs, Lord. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I hear your voice, God, and I want to respond. I want to follow you from this day. Give me a brand new heart and a brand new spirit that I may know you and follow you for the rest of my life. This I pray in Jesus' name. If you pray a prayer, we'd love to help you grow in your relationship with God. Just feel free to message us. Um, you can mention that uh, in the prayer link uh, here in the caption of this video. Or message the one invited and say, you know, I prayed a prayer after the service. Pwede mo ba ko tulungan how can grow in knowing this Lord who is so great and so good. Um, we want to help you out. That's the best decision you could ever make. And this is not the end, but just the beginning of many more. So we're going to continue to worship the Lord. This time we're going to partake of communion. And uh, what a fitting reminder of how our shepherd laid down his life for us on the cross to save us. And I would like for you to have the time um, to prepare your hearts. We're going to worship the Lord and get ready with the communion elements. And we're going to partake of it together. Let's just worship the Lord. and laugh we did not fight a thousand men he'll crucify as crimson stains that fill your mind you look upon me with delight but prone to cross came to die a crown for thorns to bring new life with every nail I feel your mind you look upon me with delight oh what love how can Sway to glorious light, and tears away the chains that bind. The sons and daughters in your eyes, you look upon us with delight. Oh, what love! How can
Let's partake of the Lord's table. Let's lift up the prayer. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we thank you, God, for your body that was broken for us. You lay down your life. So that we who are spiritually dead, Lord, we who are destined for eternal death, but have a full life, an abundant life, even eternal life. We thank you, God, that on your body, you took all our sickness and disease so that we can be healed. Lord, as we partake of this bread, which is a symbol of your body broken for us, we declare that you are the true bread of heaven, the true bread of life, the bread of heaven that came down to give us life in the full. And as we partake of this bread, Lord, let your healing come. Let the fullness of life come. Let the joy of eternal life come upon each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. Let's partake of the bread. Let's give up the cup. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, we thank you, God, for your blood that was shed on the cross for us. We thank you, God, that through that sacrifice, there is now forgiveness for our sins and cleansing from all unrighteousness. As we partake of this cup, Lord, which is a symbol of your blood shed for us, may you cleanse us and wash away every guilt, every shame, every condemnation, every iniquity, Lord, and cover us with your righteousness. And you fill our hearts, Lord, with the Spirit of God, with your Holy Spirit, that we may know you more and have the power to obey you and follow you for the rest of our lives. We thank you, God, for sacrifice that you have made lord we not only proclaim and die but we celebrate lord, what you have done for us and i pray god that uh, what we have enjoyed in you lord is something that others will get to enjoy too we thank you god for your sacrifice we will be forever grateful we give you praise glory and honor in jesus name let's pray that you come Step up, of hands. Lord, we thank you just for who you are and for what you've done. We give you praise, glory, and honor. May we live our lives that will celebrate your Lordship over our lives as we follow you. Lord, may many more people around us get to know you as their Lord, as their shepherd as well, and find satisfaction and provision in you as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining today's worship service. May you have a great week as you continue to follow the Lord who is our shepherd. See you next time. Thank you, Pastor Richie, for sharing the word and thank you everyone for worshiping with us. Let's continue to pray for our nation. 
See you again in our morning and prayer at 7 a.m. from Monday to Friday. Also, our 12 noon prayer time from Monday to Saturday. And hopefully, you can join us with our 24-7 prayer watch. God bless everyone.